You can find a lot of jellyfishes roaming around across the lands between, but there are only two jellyfish items in the game that you can use. Jellyfish Shield and Jellyfish Summon. I wish there is more, but that's it. My intention was completing Elden Ring solely using these two items, but apparently the run was far more difficult than I expected, so I made some rules. Number one, it's essential for me to use these two items as my main damage dealer. And the second one, I'm allowed to use supporting items like spell buffs, consumables, and other stuffs. There are already a bunch of shield only run out there, but I want to try it myself with my own rules, so I hope this will be entertaining enough to watch. Make sure to subscribe and follow my Twitter so you can keep up with content like this. Alright, let's get started. At the beginning, I picked hero class because I thought I'll be focusing on strength for the whole playthrough. It's gonna be jellyfish. And I was right. It's just jellyfish shield scales with dex as well, so I have to work a little bit on my dexterity, which is not a problem at all. You can get the jellyfish summon very easily in the game, and the shield also available in Lyrnia without having to fight a single boss. Let's go, Jellyfish Shield! Jellyfish Shield has a unique Ash of War called Contagious Fury that gives you 20% damage for 30 seconds. My next objective is to get Radigan Sword Seal in Kaelid just so I can reach the weapon requirement without leveling up. Radigan Sword Seal gives 5 points to certain stats and one of them is Dexterity. It's rats. I don't like rats. For now, I can fully use the Jellyfish Shield, so let's get to market right away. Let's go! Yeah, how many rounds? Do you think how many, how many attempts? For me to beat Margaret. I was guessing on how many tries to take me to beat Margaret, but I was a bit overconfident thinking I could beat him first try. I'm aware of how slow my attack speed is, but I cannot say that it's slow enough to give me a hard time. Oh, that's that's a decent damage, man. Jump attack and heavy attacks definitely give significant damage, but light attack has speed advantage, which I need oh, for okay, future yeah, bosses. The benefit of using the great shield is the block counter, which is very useful in this case. The buff gives a small damage yes, boost that's barely noticeable, that. but I'll take that extra damage. Uh. No! Get Tysman for Fate, Sargazer Heirloom. I mean, Two Finger Heirloom. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. One last try, guys, one last try. Ah, no, no. Okay, got that one. Very nice. Okay, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. No! Too late, too late. Ah, oh, God, that was stupid. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, dude! They was close, they was close. Okay, I definitely gonna win this. I realized I couldn't summon the jellyfish when fighting Margaret, and apparently I forgot to meet Rani in the church, so I have to buy the spirit calling bell in Round Table Hold. I think we need some other buffs so the shield can deal more damage. I got Flame Grant Me Strength to boost my damage and Star Scorch Heirloom while I'm in Kaelid, even though I cannot equip another Talisman at the moment. I think so. Flame Grant Me Strength. Shit, oh it's over there. Okay, we're gonna kill this fucker over here. Oh god damn! Also, Golden Vow as well by killing this Wandering Knight. I asked the chat if I can stack these buffs and they said yes, so I, I think they can. Um, Contagious Fury. There we go. Golden Vow! 
So yeah, I continue my journey to Stormfell Castle and got a curved sword talisman to boost my guard counter from the shield. Easy man, easy. Right away fighting Godric. At the beginning of the fight, I'll utilize all the buffs to maximize my damage, but it's gonna be the only time I use these buffs. The only rebuff I'll use is the Contagious Fury, because it's, it's take less time than the other buffs. The damage from the shield is surprisingly decent, but unlike Margaret, I can only use the guard counter on his first phase. There are a lot of openings for Godric, so he's not really an issue, honestly. Uh. Oh, damn. Uh, flame grip me string. Oh god damn, I, I was too late. Flame grip me string. I should have increased my FP a little bit. I love it. Yep, not getting greedy, man. Not getting greedy. Upgrading my weapon is necessary, but I didn't intend to upgrade my summon since farming Grave Glowford can take a good minute, so I decided to go through another boss until I feel like I need to use summon. For the second great rune, I pick Renala over Radan since I thought fighting Radan would be much of a hassle with the shield, but apparently Renala wasn't a perfect choice either. I hate him very much. But we'll get to that in the second after beating Red Wolf. Oh wow, dude, I pressed the fucking button, man. This is bad. Flame Grammy Strang. Uh, heal. And then Contagious Fury. There we go. Ooh! That is. That is uh, really good damage over there. Okay, second try. I think I experienced the same thing as my Soldier of Godric run when I had trouble with Renala. While well, it can turn a blind eye on her first phase, for some reason her second phase can almost kill me in a single hit. Okay. Well, actually the problem was on me since I barely level up at all. Uh, the other issue here is me being greedy and the summon that hardly despawn when they're supposed to be. Because it took me a couple deaths, I think I have to level up by going to Mogwin. Okay, okay, so what we are about to do right now is... What the fuck? That is so slow, man. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no. So, let's try this. Uh, drink. And then... There we go. Oh no. This is all to get roots. So you can actually fall down and then start attacking some air. And yeah, you will get runes. Publicize every single video of that. There we go. Okay, we got like 120k runes. I also got the carrier nut armor just for better protection in general. Okay, we got it. Okay. Bro, 
Bro! How is the dragon still not... Oh no. Oh my god, I'm still alive! What the? After a couple more deaths, I finally get the grip. Enough to beat Renan at this point. Dude, like, people keep saying Gideon is easy. There is nothing easy about Gideon, I would say. Because the damage from the shield was quite a lot in my opinion, I didn't get to worry about it, but it has slow recovery time that will punish me whenever I get a bit greedy. The summons are just straight up annoying because usually I can just despawn them by running away a bit far, but some of them, especially the wolf, they left a few of them to stay sometimes. Shit, shit. The dog was still there! He's attacking non-stop, man. Okay, at least I get a hit. Oh no! That is not good, that is not good. Okay, that's good. Oh god, okay. Uh, one more round then, one more round. One more turn. Yay! <laughs> it's time to progress the Lindell and facing my arch nemesis, the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I wasn't too worried about this guy since I've beaten him with Ward's weapon before, but getting used to his heavy blow while managing my slow recovery time can be quite hard sometimes. I shouldn't do that. There is a good chance to break his stance at the beginning of the fight, and I have to trigger that to cut at least a quarter of his HP. Uh, shit, how do we do this? Obviously, I have to use all the buffs from the start to maximize my damage output, but since his safe opening is only when he shoots fire, the buff will definitely cool down pretty fast. Oh, he is staggered. Also, I'm using light attack more often because jump attacks has slower recovery time and usually I get caught by his follow-up attacks. Only fire breath. No! Oh, oh, sh oh, never mind. I thought I, I thought I dodged that. Okay. That's it, that's the one. And that's the only time I'm gonna use it. Pull back. Okay, 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 we good, we good, we good. Oh, okay, nice, uh, epic. Oh, I was too late, it's okay. What the fuck? Okay, okay, dude, this is... Entering Lindell now and I found Lionel's set. Lionel's armor as well. To be fair, I know I cannot equip the full armor, but Shield adding some pieces to improve my protection doesn't sound too bad. So Going for so Godfrey to get the last talisman slot. As I expected, the fight was easy. I might be testing some move set, and that's the reason I got hit a lot, but Godfrey has a lot of openings that gives you enough time to attack and dodge. At this moment, I don't really need light roll, but I have a feeling I might need it in the future. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, recharge my stamina real quick. I miss! What? We made it! We made it! 
Before fighting Morgoth, there are a few changes that has to be done with my build. I know I have to replace Radigan Sword Seal because it will be risky from now on, so I get the Green Dog Talisman to boost my stamina recovery. The dogs, the dogs. What the dog doing? Also, I have to go back to Kaelid and do this H jumping parkour to get the Dragon Crest Talisman. 50% progression on Morgoth, so let's get to it. I would say the fight wasn't that hard, but it's quite challenging. The shield without buff barely did any damage and I think the only time for me to use Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength is at the beginning of the fight as usual. The rest, I just have to rely on using Contagious Fury whenever I see the opportunity. No way. Morgoth has a few openings in this situation, but my favorite is when he slides to the side before swinging his sword. Okay, nice. Second phase, I summon Aurelia just to buy me a little time to rebuff. Morgoth now has at least two notable openings. But the downside oh, wow. is my damage will be a bit lower since I'm mostly gonna utilize light attacks more often just to be safe. Super close, my guy. Some moves allows me to use the jump attacks or heavy attack, but some moments can be dangerous since he's kind of fast. Uh! <laughs> Took me a few tries before finally beat him. Oh no! Oh, he's alive! We're heading to Fire Giant, but I have to further upgrade my shield. Luckily, the rest of the somber stones are easy to get, especially in the mountain tops of the giants. Minus the ancient somber stones, obviously. Little did I know, this is when everything went downhill. So, Fire Giant then. I think the fight was quite easy. It's just a lot of patience has to be involved, since the damage on the second phase was super insignificant. Oh god, no way, I'm gonna be dead. But his first phase was quite easy. Also, I can land multiple heavy attacks that sometimes break his stance. Okay, epic. Now, the problem wasn't about the fight directly, but it's more of a skill issue or being unlucky. God damn, this is so bad. I think I died more often caused by the fire, but sometimes I died from physical attacks as well. There are no strats on second phase outside of staying under his crotch. Now before anyone says anything, I know the weakness are on his hands and his giant eye in the middle, but using shield to attack is very ineffective. This. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this! Oh wow, okay, I vote that. That's crazy. So 
So what I need to do right now is just keep going until I beat him, which surprisingly took a while. Fucking hell, man. God! We're in for Umazula and we're about to fight the best duo bosses in the entire Souls franchise. As expected, the fight was going extremely well, and I think I spent another 5 hours with these guys just like my previous video. Never mind. But actually, after a couple minutes, I decided to do something else and power up even more, so I went down under the capital city to fight Minimoak. Let's see if I can do this. Hug the wall. First try, let's go! So Mini Moke, the easier version of Big Moke. Same stress as usual, keep on hitting him with light attacks since I definitely need that faster recovery time and also the damage was quite good honestly. I got hit a bunch in this fight just because I want to maximize my damage by trying different stuffs but I think light attack is the safest one here. Okay, apparently jump attacks was just too hard for me. Opening is as big as Megamind's head, so that would give me some easy time to refresh before going back to Godskin Duo. Oh! 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 I got Earth Tree Favor to boost some of my stats. Currently not using that specific talisman, but I suspect I might need it for later game. So maybe, uh, south. Okay. Yes, of course. Bruh. Group cards, we got it. We got the Frenzy Flame ending. So I powered up a bit and get back to Gutskin Duo, but it seems the situation wasn't changing at all. My other option is to use my Jellyfish Summon since it hasn't been properly utilized through the entire playthrough so maybe I need to upgrade it as well. Unfortunately, I got camera and mic problems at this moment so I have to end the stream but I'm still gonna get those Grave Glowfort outside the stream. Even though I only reached plus 9 since the Great Glowfort was a bit hard to get if I remember correctly. Okay, there is one Inferno Missoula but I forgot. Anyway, I also got the Blue Dancer Charm to boost my damage output, but in order to do so, I have to take off my armor so I can get the lightest equip load possible. Giving these new upgrades a couple of tries, and things are still not working. Jellyfish Summon wasn't helping at all since it only draws their attention for a short time before shifting back their focus to me. Fuck, I get burned. And also, the jellyfish died pretty fast. I think I need something else to help me out. I could use sleep pots to cheese them like everyone else, but in this case, I don't think it will help me that much. Plus, it was my last resort, so I pick other alternatives like the buckler shield. I got this one only for Gutskin Duo. A lot of people find parrying to be one of the good strats for Gutskin Duo, but I suck at parrying, or using buckler parry to be specific. Fuck, I can't do that. So I got another shield Ash of War which is Golden Parry. It increases parry range a little bit. Okay. Uh, how do I destroy those um, hit drops carob? <laughs> oh yes, we got it. Okay, after a few tries I think parrying was still a bit hard for me, but I can see it's easier to land heavy attack when the noble got staggered. But it didn't flip the situation at all. Oh shit! Because for some reason, I feel difficult to time my parry and dodge on their second phase. And don't even get me started on the postal sneaky attack. This shit is annoying as fuck. After feeling tired of this BS, I think I have to get some sleep pots. At this point, I don't feel confident at all. 
This is the hardest Gatskin duo fight I've ever tried, honestly. You know what? I think I say that in every challenge run, but this time is genuinely my worst. The mic problem started to occur at this moment. Everything was a mess, honestly, so I call it a day. Uh, when the big one rolls, I just think of you spin uh, the. Alright. After gathered my courage and ambition, and I'm ready to cut off them foreskins, this time I was able to beat one of the Gatskin noble, so I think pairing might do the job. Well, no, because that's the only time I ever gonna be able to kill one of them. Just one. This is by far like the furthest I can get, you know. Oh my god, I did kill one of them. Sleep pot's also very ineffective if you didn't do the setup from the beginning. So yeah, I ran out of option. Therefore, the same thing happened as the previous video. I gotta summon Bernal, my jellyfish mate. Again, I take the L. I feel like I'm only able to beat this duo with certain weapons. Shield is not one of them. Fire giant yesterday? Oh, relatable, man. Very relatable. So did you beat him? I hope you beat him though, so it's, because it's gonna be painful as hell, man. Let's put everything behind, because in my opinion, that fight before was the hardest part in this run so far. I genuinely prayed for the rest of the bosses wouldn't be anything like Godskin Duo. I know, I know. Oh wait, wait, wait! I, I thought we, I thought I already went, win that, bro. Okay, okay. My bad, my bad. <laughs> so it's time for Malakit. Before the fight, I have to tell you guys that I forgot to turn on my timer, but the fight didn't take long. So yeah, I suspect there will be only one safe opening for Malakith, the one when he embeds his dagger to the side. But apparently, he has more openings in his first phase. So whenever he throws any projectiles at me, as long as I get close enough to him, I can always land a single light attack. First try. Maybe. Second phase was the same for every single challenge run ever. Destined death, that's the key. Actually, if I was brave enough, I can land some more, but I'm not a risk taker, so you know. How did I, how did that miss, man? Oh, I miss. Come on, jump. There we go. Death and death. He's gonna be dead, I think. Oh, one more hit. Next one is Gideon, and there's this phrase that I keep saying all the time. Gideon is hard, dude. I put him below Gaskin Duo in terms of how annoying he is. I was a bit troubled, honestly, but it's not really an issue when you have Aurelia on your side to distract him. Oh, oh, oh my god, dude. I knew it. Thank you so much, man, for reminding me. This is what I need to do. That's right, that's right, keep doing that. Oh, that's, that's not very nice. Oh god. Oh wait. Oh 
Oh, thank God. At this part of the game, I think it should be less intense since Godfrey and Radagon have solid pattern and openings, but I still need to keep my guard up. See what I did there? Never mind. I was slacking too much, my guy. There is no way we're not beating them to die. Oh, I was greedy. Oh, my greediness, greediness was rewarded actually. Uh. Oh. Well, I need you to do the jump, please. No! Oh, thank God. Poison him. Shoot him! Shoot him! Oh dang, rest in peace. Ah. Oi! That's actually a decent damage. Oh, oh, this is very epic. <laughs> Keep destroying the poise or the stance or whatever you want to call it.
No, fire, fire, fire. Fire is not good. Fire is not good. Break the poise, please. Shit, shit. No, Aurelia is dead. Oh, yes. This is what I've been waiting for. The last two main bosses weren't as difficult as I expected, so after that, we can go for some of the Remembrance bosses. First try, guys. The first one to fight is Moke. Big Moke. I should have summoned Aurelia, by the way, I forgot. You know, I can go without the special Crystal Tear if I have more flash, but I prefer getting that Crystal Tear compared to the Golden Seeds. So, I went to Altus Plateau to fight Eleonora. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, come here now. Mokford's face was exactly the same like the one from Lindell, so he doesn't bother me at all, but his second face was a bit frustrating in challenge runs. Oh, that's what I've been waiting for. Luckily for me, the method of kissing Moke so he couldn't do anything within that range was still working fine in this case. Light attack was a better choice, but there are some chances if I want to pull heavy attacks on him. A bit risky though. Wow, I magically avoid that, that's crazy. That is not good, that is not good. Oh! The next boss we're going to is the one located in Furu Missoula again. Placidusax. Now, I already spent a lot of time to beat the game, so I gotta beat the rest of the bosses off stream though. What the f Fuck, dude. I didn't expect this fight to be a stretch because I just used my usual strats by attacking its tail. Apparently, my damage was very low on him. I have to rely on Contagious Fury and Jump Attack to deal a decent damage. Second phase, I wouldn't say it's crazy hard or anything, but some point in the fight, he will be using the lightning strike and disappear at the same time. It caught me off guard a few times, but I have to 100% concentrate to see where he's gonna spawn. Or he'll kill me in one hit.
All right, so we're gonna travel to the Helic Tree. But before that, we have two more bosses halting our way. First one is Niall. Okay, um, he's easy. One of his banished knight can be easily killed by a guard counter. Yes, they got staggered a lot, so three or more hits might kill them right away. Niall himself has quite wide openings. That lightning kick is always a primary opening for me, but sometimes I can sneak a good one on his blizzard attack, but it's not very safe to do that. Most of his attacks are quite slow, so I have to take advantage to land a single jump attacks on that, and also he doesn't have a lot of variation on his moves. That's also a good side of Niall. I died two times probably after experimenting, but yeah, it didn't take too long to beat him. Before going to the Helic Tree, I almost forgot to do the Jellyfish quest. I think it's necessary to do so since it's a Jellyfish run anyway. But yeah, I reunited Aurelia with her sister and acquired the Primal Greenstone Blade that is basically useless with my current build. But let's just take it for a memento. We entered the consecrated snowfield and I got a new achievement for myself to not dying a single time while litting all the four candles in Ordina. We're inside the helic tree and we're going even deeper right now. Loretta. Yes, I spawned Aurelia to help me out because I don't want to spend another minute struggling with a horseback knight. But the fight was quite fast, even without Jellyfish summon. I think my damage was big enough to kill her. Also, there are a lot of chances to do jump attacks and somehow staggered her. Aurelia helped me a lot by keeping Loretta's attention to her and poisoned her as well. I don't really have to dodge her attacks when she got distracted, but I almost got hit a few times because I cannot stop being greedy. So last pull, I prepared myself to spend another couple hours on Melania, but after testing a few stuffs on her, the fight was far from my expectation. Using summons definitely a no-go here, since I was preventing Melania to recover her HP. Buffs are not quite necessary to use looking back at it, because it was barely noticeable, but I'll take any damage boost anytime. Dodging her moves is not a problem for me thanks to the blue dancer charm that forced me to get naked. For her first phase, it's definitely taking a good minute especially when the buff went out after 30 seconds and the only reoccurring buff I can use is a Contagious Fury. I think most of her slow winded attacks are a good opening for me but I prefer doing jump attacks even though light attack has a faster recovery time. I brought two blue flashes and one of them has to be used in her first phase and I can use the other for second phase. The first time she does call it Aeonia, it's actually a big opportunity to rebuff. But the time was very slim to stack 3 buffs 
and I could only land a single jump attack after that. I expect using charge attack might hurt her even more, but I never got a chance. Second phase, the windows are closing faster than ever, but I dealt more damage than before. One of the notable opening here is when she does the Scarlet Explosion. It allows me to use jump attack so I can land more damage to her, but she can also trick me by doing the second jump. It's kinda dangerous, but when I got the grip, it's more of a duration fight. And that's the summary of the jellyfish run. An epic frenzy flame ending because I want to see everyone dies. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this bubbly journey. Special thanks to channel members for supporting me. I am very much appreciated. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I stream something like this every now and then, so why not stop by when you got the time? Alright, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.